the top three deadliest snakes of the Amazon coming up. Subscribe now. Fangs in your face. What's up, Venom Squad? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Hey, I want to thank my supporters so much for the generous support you guys show us. It really means the world to us. And we'd like to thank you guys, everybody on this list. Big love from Venom Central. Thank you guys so much. What's up, Venom Squad? Hey, you think about it, the Amazon. Probably one of the most dangerous places in the world, right? I'd like to just live down there. I, I'd, I'd pitch a tent and just live in the damn jungle if I could. But let me tell you, um, 65,930 log. Now these are, these are reported snake bites in the Amazonian region. Now this is reported to the Brazilian Ministry of Health. So these are actually case studies, okay? And the snake with the most number of bites that does the most damage, of course, is the Bothrops. You know, Bothrops bit. Now, now this study was conducted from 2010 to 2015, okay? And some of the numbers have changed recently, but it's still close. Now, Bothrops have actually bites, I mean, documented Bothrop bites. 57,374 of them, 65,930 were Bothrops bites. And it could, I mean, it ranges from species, from Laocorus to Mugenai to Jerakosu to, to Atrox to all of them, okay? And believe it or not, second in line is Lachesis with only 5,217 bites. That's a low number. They're not coming in contact with people that much, you know? To, different setting but crotalus now you need tropical rattlesnakes 3103 bites okay and of course macrarus all your coral snakes is is next to nothing which is you know i wouldn't even classify it as one of the deadliest snakes in the amazon because it's not but only 236 bites in five years that's peanuts compared to the other ones and now 84 percent of these bites were all lower limb bites so they're 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 legitimate bites you know they were done on plantations um rural areas different things we'll get into all that but 80 percent 87 percent of it was all in like rural areas okay but we're gonna get into it and i just happen to have all three of these species here at venom central you know Somebody that studies Bothrops like I do and Lachesis and all this stuff, you know, and, and I've been doing this for quite a while. And, you know, I was just looking at some of my polyvalent, some of my anti-venom for the Bushmasters, for the, for all the new tropical rattlesnakes and all of the Bothrop species. You know, that's what it's manufactured for. Okay. It's manufactured for, you know, and this is a product that is made by, uh, the uh, Institute uh, Claude Miro Picado, and it's in it's in Costa Rica. But let me tell you, it's it's anti Bothrico, anti uh, Crotalico, and anti Lachesco Lachesis. But it makes sense, don't it? I mean, literally. And those are the three most deadliest snakes in the Amazonian region, throughout South America and throughout Central America. But you know, and you're your antivenom, I mean, if you guys ain't familiar, I mean, which I know a lot of people ain't, you know, your antivenom always comes with, now, I like the live flies antivenom because, you know, it comes in a powder form, okay? You can see it's never been open and it's, I mean, and we keep it refrigerated, but, you know, this is live flies. That means it's, it's actually turned into a powder form, okay? And then actually you get... You get your fluid to go ahead and constitute this so it can be inserted into an IV and you can get put on a drip, okay? But, you know, and we keep a pretty good stock of this. Um, you'd be foolish not to, <laughs> but, uh, especially with all the dangerous stuff I play with. Uh, but anyways, just makes sense, right? And reading some of these recent studies and the numbers are devastating. They are devastating when it comes down to the bites, the number of bites over this case study. And... Bothrops, man, Bothrops, responsible for the 
crazy amount of death, crazy amount of bites is all attributed to damn Bothrops. But you're going to be surprised on some of the numbers on the two other species. So we're going to start with our native tropical rattlesnakes. Okay, guys, one of the animals on the list for the deadliest snakes of the Amazonian <laughs> is, of course, the native tropical rattlesnake. The cascabel, but this is your Crolus terrestris. Okay, now this snake having six to seven different subspecies throughout the region, throughout all of South America, it's pretty prevalent down there. Okay, but this snake prefers a high, uh, a, a much drier habitat than the Amazon rainforest, so it doesn't come in contact as many people as say the Bothrop do. But this snake definitely was responsible for 3,103 bites from the period of, no you don't, <laughs> from the period of 2010 to 2015 according to this study that I read. But this snake is a kill bite, okay? This snake is a kill bite. The problem with this animal is the damn venom is so toxic. I mean, it, it holds a very high neurotoxic component compared to some of the other rattlesnake species of the world, compared to Central America and, and, and North America. The South American rattlesnakes have a high neurotoxic component, you know, along with other components that are all working at the same time. Your hemotoxins and cryotoxins and myotoxins and oh my, the toxins. But interesting fact, during the 90s, it was like a 72% death rate if you were bitten by a neotropical rattlesnake. So that's crazy, right? But now with the with the production of the of the anti-venom and better health care and 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 all the knowledge that we've gained through the years, you know, it's it's actually knocked way down. I think it's like 3.3% or something like that. So things are getting better. But being responsible for that many bites. You know, it's it's still it's still a serious player on the list. <laughs> and now I'll tell you, um, a lot of the bites on this study that I read, they were all lower extremity, you know, lower limbs, you know, so they're legitimate bites, you know. It, that's it, and and I believe it. It, it even read as where where, where um, a lot of a lot of the bites were on um, school children and males between the age of eighteen and like forty five, and so it's it the snake can kill people and it does but things have changed and it's better now so anyways this guy is a serious player on the list of some of the most dangerous snakes in the amazon amazonian region particularly brazil but uh that's it that's the neotropical rattlesnake y'all okay y'all our next snake on the three deadliest snakes of it amazon is the Bushmaster. Now let me tell you, um, this specimen is large, okay? It, he's large and in charge, but he's in blue right now, and this is a sensitive, scary time for him, so I'm not going to pull this snake out and get next to him on the floor, not even with a barrier, you know, because even though this guy is a big, gentle giant, I've seen him go from zero to 60 like that, so... I'm going to get him out and keep my hands on him where I can control him, okay? And we're going to talk a little bit about Bushmasters. I'll probably actually just set him on the floor and let him cruise around a little bit with me standing way in the back. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, the Bushmaster is literally the most feared damn snake in the Amazon. And it gets blamed for more snake bites than all the others. I mean, that's why I'm amazed at the number of this one, it, it being over 5,000 bites within that five-year case study. And I think it's attributed to a lot of Bothrop bites that are misidentified as Bushmaster. Because they done, they actually done a thing going from village to village in some of the more rural areas where they literally showed pictures of different snakes and 90% of villagers point out Bushmaster, Bushmaster, and they were showing them like a Bothrop species. So he gets the bad press, but the bites are fatal. There's no two ways about it. At 92% death rate, even with any venom, that's a serious player. But I'm gonna take this big guy out and we're gonna take a look at him real quick. Okay, we're gonna pull this big guy out nice and gentle-like. And we're not gonna take too many liberties with him because he is in blue and this is not a good time to mess with a snake, especially an eight-foot Bushmaster, okay? Let me get that out of the way. 
the way so I'm not tripping over it. Come on, big handsome boy. And let me tell you, this snake is really a big gentle boy. And if you watch my Instagram, you'll see, I mean, I literally let this guy out. He, I let him cruise around the room. I do it once a week. I let him just stretch his legs, <laughs> so to speak. And um, and I'll tell you, he's, he, he's never shown me any kind of aggression, but he goes through these little spurts where he goes from zero to 60 and he just takes off. But I need to get him in the right position because he is in blue and we don't want to scare him and startle him. And he's being hook wise right now. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. We're working on it. <laughs> there we go. He is being hook wise right now. Now, when I say a snake's being hook wise, it means he knows how to maneuver his body so you can't hook him. And what I need to do is get that tail and keep his head in the can. There we go. And now that is a big boy. That is eight foot of Lachesis muda. And now this, this animal has a couple of subspecies. And uh, I'll tell you, but this is a denzen of the rainforest. This guy loves primary forest. And sometimes they can even be found in secondary forest. But this guy is a denzen of the rainforest. And this snake takes the grunt of the bad press for all the snakes down there in the Amazon. But I tell you what we're gonna do guys, I'm just gonna set him down real gentle and we're gonna let him just kind of chill out and cruise around a little bit with me back here at a safe distance because he is in blue and this isn't a good time for him or me to be handling this animal. Now this Lachesis muda, uh, I tell you, um, even with the subspecies, they're they are literally hard to find. I mean, it's not an animal that is rarely encountered because they are so secretive. And the whole thing of it is, is that their bites are 92% fatal. That is huge. And that's even with antivenom treatment. So the numbers on this one, you know, at 5,217 bites in that five year period, that one I, I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of on the ledge about because we know that it gets blamed for a lot of the Bothrops bites. So, you know, it may be a smaller number, but then again, this was reported to the, to the Brazilian health ministry. So, you know, if they're verified Muda, I don't know, but we're gonna put a link to the article and you guys can see it for yourself, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to stay back here on the way of this animal guys and keep him in the right direction. Okay. But the moral of the story is the Bushmaster is definitely a kill bite. <laughs> and as gentle as this guy is, you know, he can definitely put you six feet under. There's no doubt about that. With the venom being, you know, largely hemorrhagic, um, definitely necrotic, you know, mild toxins present. Uh, <laughs> They believe now that neurotoxins are also present and cytotoxins are also present. So what the hell? <laughs> We're learning more, but definitely, I mean, this was a bad customer. And, uh, you know, there was, I read a damn um, uh, a case study where there was um, confirmed Bushmaster bites. And one was in Bahia, okay, uh, of a five-year-old boy. I mean, literally, he, he passed away after 15 minutes. That is incredible. I mean, what a sad way to go, I mean, for a child. And another was in Mato Grosso, for, and, it, and it was a, a, a bite from a Lachesis Muda, and, uh, and it was like a seven or eight year old boy, and he died within 90 minutes. So, you know, this guy ain't nothing to play with, you know? And I see some of these videos where, where, where some of these guys are like free handling a, a damn big Muda, and, it just, and I just cringe. I'm like, oh my Lord, you know what I mean? It's just. It's just, if you knew the statistics and knew just how dangerous the snake was, you wouldn't be that liberal with it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, the Lachesis Muda, this guy is a bad customer. He is the most feared snake in South America, in the Amazon, and it deserves its respect. Okay, 57,374.
this is the main player in this study, the Bothrop species, okay? Now, just recently, taxonomists have split Bothrops up into like five or six different groups, okay? You know, encompassing all 47 to, I think maybe even 50 species now. <laughs> I mean, it, this stuff changes daily. And it is definitely one of the most dangerous snakes in the Amazon, in Brazil, and in, in, in South America. And of course, if you guys Google it, everybody's going to pull, you know, um, uh, Bothrops insularis, the, the golden lance has the most deadliest snake in, in, in South America. Think, you know what? That snake is isolated on an island that nobody can get on and nobody's allowed on. You know, there's several different little Bothrop species that are isolated on little islands. You know, there's another one, the uh, Bothrop alcatraz, and it's isolated on a couple of little island chains off the coast of of Brazil. And it's a weird little Bothrop. It's got bigger eyes and it's cool. It's maybe in a family with the Bothrop jerraca and so the damn Insularis and the island species don't count because I don't think there's even been a recorded death of the Insularis of, of, of the Golden Lance head. I may be wrong. And the thing is, is there is a damn Bothrop species that fit in any kind of habitat down there. So there's just that many of them. You know, and the venom of the Bothrops. You know, you might as well go ahead and stick a needle in you with acid and have it eat your skin off because that's basically what it is. You know, the best way to describe Bothrops venom you know, with all the proteins and enzymes, it, it does a lot of stuff. It, basically, it's it it it's hemolytic and it's protolytic. You know what I mean? And that encompasses all the proteins and enzymes that the Bothrops carry. But we're going to start out with Bothrops mugenii. I'm going to pull this little crazy female out and just watch how this snake acts. <laughs> and then we're going to talk a little bit about Bothrops behavior and why there are so many bites related to Bothrops. Okay, we're going to start with the, with, with the Mugenii. And I've got several Bothrop species, but, and this little girl's handful, let me tell you right now, she is, she usually comes flying out here with her mouth open. So I'm going to get her out and just hook her, and, and I can, I can handle this animal. She's not massive, but she is definitely a biter, <laughs> okay, which they all are. And from a keeper standpoint, Bothrops are, they are, they're all red line. I mean, it's not like any other snake. And, and the thing that's interesting about Bothrops is these guys, even though they are pit vipers and they work off a, a heat signature from a prey at them or, or whatever the case may be, they're big sight hunters. So anything that moves, they're like beating on it and striking at it. And that's why there's a lot of unprovoked bites concerning Bothrops. But just like, let's see if she does it. She normally, I'm surprised she isn't already up at the glass here. Oh, not today. Usually because she comes shooting out of here, mouth wide open. But let's see if we can just get her out for a minute. Hey, come here, you little devil. And this is a proven breeder. This little mama has given us a couple of clutches over the past couple of years. And she's going to start hook crawling on me. That is the Bothrops mugenii, okay? Also known as the Brazilian lancehead. And I'm not going to let her get nowhere near me. We're just going to let her balance on that hook. Maybe I can bring her a little closer to the, to the camera there. Now, this snake is medically significant right now. They're finding all kinds of new stuff with BMV, with Bothrops mugenii venom, okay? And this one is going to be important this is an important snake to the labs to the to, to all of that stuff now that's why i'm i'm actually I'm, I'm i'm reproducing these in captivity pretty steadily now but unprovoked bites and a venom that is just next to none this is this is a pretty hot bothrop species they are definitely hot little some bitches and this snake actually um this year she gave us 13 babies last year she gave us 11 babies but let me tell you an interesting thing that she done. She literally had a clutch of 13 babies. And then, seven weeks later, she had another baby. And this baby was probably three times larger than all the others. Now, it was a stillborn. You know, you know she's, she's balancing there. I'm just going to let her kind of crawl right back in there. And we'll just kind of film her in there. But seven weeks later, she had another baby. It was a stillborn. But it was in perfect shape. It wasn't 
Um, it wasn't like rotted or it, it wasn't it, it wasn't a layover. It wasn't something that 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 got like stuck in her. It was like a delayed birth, and which was is crazy. I wish it would have made it. I wish it wasn't a stillborn. It would have been awesome. Just recently, there was a study where Bathros Mugeni in captivity for seven or eight years, never been in with a male, never been in with another one, just had a litter of babies. I mean, just asexual birth, just, you know, parthenogenesis, just, just had babies out of the blue. And it also happened with Bathrops Laocorus. So these guys are so prolific. That's why there's so many of them, you know, just interesting stuff. But that's the Mugeni guys. That's one of the, that's one of the killers of the Amazon. <laughs> For our next Bathrops species that I'm going to break out. Now, taxonomists has changed this too. This, this was Bothrops alternatus, which it's, if I'm central, still Bothrops alternatus, okay? But it's, it's rhinocerophrius, which to my understanding, isn't even a real word. It's a made up word just to classify this, but the taxonomist broke them all into different classifications. This is one of our big breeder females. And now this snake isn't, I mean, it, it can't be accredited to a lot of bites. This snake is not quite as, not quite as venomous as say the Mugeni or the Laocorus or the Atrox and, and, and some of the other Bothrops, the Brazili, but, but it's still an ill-tempered snake and strikes and bites are unprovoked. I mean, they're, they, they just don't take any mess. They're flighty and they're, they're, they're really jumpy. And this is actually the calmest of our group. This one is not that bad, but it still does the zero to 60 thing. It can be just fine and then very quickly decided it, it's not happy about something and take off. And you hear that tail rattling? That means don't mess with me. I don't want to be screwed with. <laughs> now this snake is Southern Brazil and ranges down into Argentina and, it, and it's a cooler weather snake. It inhabits grasslands and rocky outcrops and different things, but it, it likes the cooler weather, okay? It's definitely a cooler weather snake. And this is a pretty good size one, okay? I, I haven't seen too many of them much bigger than this one. I mean, they've been known to get about 36 inches to 42 inches, but this is this is a pretty good one. This is a big female, but she's gorgeous, ain't she? And fangs are huge. Venom, don't know a lot about the venom, but no, it's, it's definitely hemolytic. And bites from, from just from my own studies, that I'm doing here, bites are brutal. I mean, they take quite a while to kill a prey them compared to the Mugeni and the Laocorus. Just a real quick look at another Bothrop species. I'm gonna set her down because I don't like that position. And we're gonna move on. What makes the Bothrops so damn dangerous? I mean, it's their attitude, okay? It's, I mean, they are a flighty, bitey, just ill-tempered snake, okay? The bites are unprovoked a lot of times, but it's the delivery system too. Not only the venom, I mean, a lot of your, it, they're all medically significant right now because, you know, a lot of your eight receptor drugs come from Bothrops venom, Jerarakasu and different things. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's a miracle what they find in venoms and the applications for them, but it's the delivery system of Bothrops. Now, everybody knows, well, the Gaboon's got the biggest fangs and there's a lot of snakes with large fangs and Gaboon's are one of them. But a lot of people don't realize just how big the fangs are on some of these Bothrop species. But I've got a couple right here that I'm going to show you guys, okay? Let me get this over here. I'm just going to put them right in my hand. All right. Now, Bushmasters have huge fangs. Mansion Vipers have huge fangs. Bothrops have daggers, okay? Now, this is an actual fang set. Now... One is from this snake that I'm getting ready to pull out, okay? And that's this one right here. Let me get them lined up so you can tell the difference here, like that. Look at the size now. This fang right here, look at the size of that thing. That's enormous. This is from this snake I'm getting ready to pull out and put on the floor. All right? From a Bothrops Laocorus, from a true six-footer. And this fang right here, I collected this fang. This is from the Bushmaster we just had out just a little bit ago. From that big 8-foot Luchesis Muda. But look at the size difference. Now, that Bushmaster 
He's bigger than her. He's bigger than this big female leg, of course. But look at the fang on that thing. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, can't see it like that. I mean, but that thing is enormous. I mean, imagine that thing penetrating you. Now, why they've developed such fangs, I mean, and there's no curvature to them. They're damn near straight. I mean, I think it's, you know, it's it's to penetrate layers of feathers and fur and, you know, I mean, these damn things probably are eating porcupines down there for all we know. But delivery system, okay? That's a delivery system. And that'd be a nightmare, <laughs> okay? But enough of that boring stuff. Let's pull the big one out. Hey, guys, next we're going to break out a very large Bothrop species. This is the Bothrop Slay Chorus, and this is a big one. This this one is a monster, and I'm not going to get her out and hold her up. And move. there's there's really no reason to. And I don't like handling this snake. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm afraid of this snake. Okay, <laughs> this snake's freaking dangerous. But I do get her and hook her and move her around only when it's called for. I don't like lifting her. She's really heavy bodied, and it's not good for her. We don't want to stress her even though this snake is not really that wild it does go from zero to 60. if this snake gets spooked it, it darts so fast and then it turns into scared you know the the flight or fight syndrome and once it does the flight syndrome then it turns around and comes at you with its mouth wide open like this and that's when it gets a little spooky but we're just going to kind of gently pull her out of here I mean, she's like Bothrop's Asper size, okay? I mean, the size of a big Asper. Now, Bothrop's Asper is another humongous Bothrop species along with this lay of course, but an Asper female can average, you know, seven, eight foot like it's nothing. But for a lay of course to be six foot, like she, she may even be six and a half now, um, is, is, is it's, it's kind of a rarity. I mean, I, I've never seen one this big. But she's a big girl. I'm going to keep this in front of me just so she doesn't bump into me if she decides to, to start to hit the road and start running on us. <laughs> but interesting, this damn snake right here, the Bothrops Laocorus, is responsible for 80 to 90% of all snake bites in Bahia. Okay? And that's incredible. So that's just how prolific they are down there. And how much they come in contact with people down there. You know what I'm saying? So, and this snake will inhabit primary forest, secondary forest. It inhabit. It will inhabit of you know cultivated fields, farmlands. It can set up shop anywhere, okay, and just make itself at home. <laughs> so, but you can see she's quite sizable, and a yield from this thing would be just out of this world. All right. I mean, literally, I mean, a yield from any of the Bothrops, I mean, just on the norm between all of them, say 10 to 20 milligrams can be a lethal dose on a yield. But the Laocorus, every bite that they deliver is going to push out at least 150 to 200, even up to 250 milligrams. And what's interesting is the damn Bothrops Mugenii will put out more. I mean, it's like 15 milligrams is a lethal dose, I believe it is. And they're averaging 250 on every bite. So, it's, it, they're giving you a whole lot more than you need. But you know what's interesting with these damn Bothrops is that, and, and what I've been studying is their feeding behavior and their strike, the whole strike sequence. Especially with the Mugenai and the Leia Chorus, they... When you see it with the naked eye, it looks like a love tap. It looks like just a quick pop, but it's not. I mean, literally, they're biting it two to three times in one strike sequence, fanging it back and forth, pulling the fang out, inserting the fang back into the prey them two to three different times in one strike sequence. Now, are they envenomating it every time? Most likely, yes. That's why the yields are so high. So, I mean... That's what makes these things so damn dangerous. I mean, literally, they are a killing machine. And they're sight hunters and they're pit vipers and they're using their thermal pits to pick up heat. So, 
And I'll tell you, that's why a lot of bites are unprovoked. They're unprovoked because it's just walking along, they catch movement, they reach out and they bang it before they even identify it as a prey item. And just the sheer number of them puts them at the highest stature of bites in that whole region. Hope you guys learned a little something from this video. And we're gonna link to all of our research data for this video so you guys can read it for yourselves. Uh, it's interesting and um, even though it was spaced back from 2010 to 2015, um, it, the article just came out recently, but there are some updated ones too that we'll link also. But read it and enjoy it. And uh, the statistics, I mean, it's, you know, we ain't pulling this stuff out of the air. <laughs> so, but anyway, the deadliest snakes in the Amazon, you know, of Brazil, the Amazonian region, definitely your Bothrop species, encompassing what's down there, and the Lachesis and your neotropical rattlesnakes. And mind you, there is a lot of different venomous snakes down there, okay? And a lot of other venomous creatures. I mean, with the insects and, I mean, there's plants down there that can probably kill you, right? They, 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 everything down there got teeth. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you guys liked this one. Hey, next week we'll come back with a feeding video, but this one was kind of an educational one. But if you guys liked it, please give us the thumbs up. Um, hit that subscribe button and come on back and check us out at Venom Central. This is Willie, we're checking out, later.